Hey everybody, this is Matt from MasterSketchup.com. Have you ever tried drawing a house in SketchUp? Um, it's it's actually really easy. It's SketchUp is a great tool for uh, drawing a house or a shed like this. Um, in this video, what I want to do is show you how to go about a project like this. I, I figured a shed would be a perfect size project for this uh, type of tutorial. But um, as you can see, this is you know a representation of a real shed. So it's not just uh, a shell on the outside. It's I actually have all the studs and the plywood and the sheathing and the soffit details. Uh, I even have like the drip edge and the the roof shingles and everything. So in this video, I'm gonna have to break this up because it's you know we have a lot of stuff to go through. But in this video. I am gonna go over how to do um, just the floor framing. So this shed, um, I should mention, I didn't design this shed myself. This shed um, was actually inspired by an article written by uh, Rick Arnold from Fine Home Building. It's a, a magazine, it's a great magazine. Uh, my friend Matt Jackson um, has a blog on the Fine Home Building website. Um, I'll link to that on the website. Um, and he shares a lot of SketchUp tips over there. But the magazine itself has some really great carpentry tips if you're a carpenter and um, you know are looking for some some tips. They, they have some great stuff. So this shed is actually designed around um, some tips that, that was in an article um, that Rick Arnold uh, did so the key uh, thought process behind the design of the shed was to minimize waste and try to make the shed um, with you know the the minimum amount of material so you can see that the footprint is actually based on two sheets of plywood so um, that's that's what we'll use to start out and let me show you underneath here uh, what the framing looks like so we actually have a beam under the um, floor joist so that eliminates the need uh, for having joist hangers so what we'll do first is since we're um, using the plywood as the dimensioning uh, rule of thumb we'll just start out with the rectangle tool and we'll go we'll just make an arbitrary rectangle and then type in four foot comma eight foot and I did that in reverse so that's no problem I can just double click that press Q for rotate and we'll rotate that around and then I'll use the push pull tool to push up and again I just click to an arbitrary place type in three quarters of an inch enter and there's my first sheet of plywood so I want to turn that into a group right away so I triple click that right click and go to make group and uh, I'm gonna just move this more in line with the uh, the sample one over here so I'll just move that up and you don't have to like paint you don't have to use the materials to paint right off the bat but in this case I'm gonna do that just for fun so I'll hit the letter B for the uh, bucket tool which is right here and um, if you uh, you might wanna pull up the material window which I think it pops up automatically and you can when you have the bucket tool activated you can go in here and and pick uh, from the drop down menu wood and then you can use this one and so that'll paint that group um, to look like plywood so now we have our first sheet of plywood we'll select that uh, press M to activate the move tool I lose track of where these tools actually are located because I'm so used to using keyboard shortcuts um, I really I very rarely will click on the tool itself to activate a tool so I started the move let me back up a little bit I I selected the move tool I already have you want to select the group first so before you select the move tool um, 
with the select tool you select it first then you type M to activate the move tool and then you reference a point so we want to reference the opposite corner and now you can see we started to move just tap control on your keyboard and that'll tell SketchUp you want to make a copy so the reason why we referenced the other corner was because we wanted to be able to bring it across and match it up with the other side so we did that but if you're a carpenter you know you need to have uh, an eighth inch space in between your uh, your plywood so you uh, you can start the move again to make a you know a second move and as you pull out you see it snaps to the green axis and you click to finish and then type in one uh, forward slash eight inch press enter and it brings you precisely to eighth inch now at this point I what I would do is is select the other one so you hold down control you go back to your select tool sorry <laughs> you go back to your select tool which is spacebar and you want to select both at the same time so you click on one and then you hold down control and you see it puts the plus sign and you click on another one so it selects them both at the same time and we want to put these into a group together so we'll right click and select make group now at this point you might want to go into your outliner which you can access from window outliner if it's not already open which you should have it open because this is your main organization tool right here so you can see these first two items here this is the main shed that we saw at the beginning of the tutorial this is the uh, f the set the floor framing off to the left here and here's the uh, the new group we just made so at this point it's a good idea to stay organized you want to label everything so um, I'm gonna label this floor framing two since I already have a couple of those open so now the next part um, is to start doing the framing and in uh, situations like this it's really easy to build the framing the floor joists and everything on top of the plywood and then group it all together and just move it uh, below the plywood at the end that's really easy to do that and it's a little um, it's easier to to organize yourself and um, kinda keep track of where you are so using the rectangle tool remember you can just press R on your keyboard we'll start out with let me come over here and hide this we're gonna start with um, these uh, rim joists here so uh, we want to stay outside of this group because I want this I want these two pieces of plywood to be on their own group so um, we'll, we'll use the rectangle tool we'll start at one corner and we'll just come over here and start at the other corner now I snapped to the edge of the plywood but I didn't get my width properly but if you look down here at the dimensions you can see it went right to eight feet and then comma and then went to an arbitrary you know I just pulled it to an arbitrary uh, dimension so in this case you can just type so you know you want your eight feet that's that's uh, solid you know that's uh, right where you want it but you want to go to inch and a half so you in this circumstance you would just press comma because you don't need to type in the eight foot it's already at eight feet and then 1.5 inch enter and that brings you to the inch and a half dimension that you're looking for and at this point you can use the push pull tool which is the letter P and pull it up again just end it click it at an arbitrary place and this is a 2x6 so we're gonna go 5.5 inch now you notice you can use uh, either fractions or decimals for your measurements you can also use inches or millimeters you can use any type of unit of measurement you want um, SketchUp will automatically understand what you're trying to do so that's 
my my first rim joist so now that I've created this you know basic shape I want to make sure it's grouped because I want to protect it from being affected by anything else I draw on it so I triple click and then right click and then make, make group now I'll go ahead again and press B to paint that now we just need to make a copy of this and bring it over to the other side so we'll uh, we'll reference this corner we'll click once with the move tool which is the letter M we'll start to drag out tap control on our keyboard to tell SketchUp we're gonna make a copy and then we'll just come over and reference this other corner now and then we'll, we'll click to, to finish now we'll do the uh, the joists in between so I'm gonna use this rim joist as the basic shape instead of you know drawing it all over again I'll just make another copy of it so select M for the move tool tap control to make a copy I'll just pull it out here somewhere arbitrary And you notice when you have the move tool activated these little red handles uh, show up on groups these are really uh, convenient they're really nice uh, little feature of SketchUp so what what that does is it activates a rotate command so you can see I'm rotating without even having to activate the rotate tool I'm just using the move tool and if you look down at the value control box it tells you what angle you're going at and it'll snap to certain angles as well so we want to go to 90 degrees and then we can grab this corner and don't forget you can orbit while you're using a tool so I'm just using my the middle mouse button on the on the mouse to orbit while I'm moving an object so that's really um, important to remember as well and just bring it over there and and snap it but you can see it's not the uh, correct length so we just need to uh, hit spacebar to bring the select tool in order to open up this group so we can change the width of it now you could if you wanted to you could use the scale tool um, and scale it like this but the problem with the scale tool is it'll stretch the I grabbed the wrong one there we want to grab the middle one if you if you use the scale tool it actually will scale the materials as well see how the the um, the wood texture is is kind of stretching at the same time a lot of times you don't want that to happen so the best bet is to um, open up the the group and use the uh, you know manipulation tools or modification tools to change the uh, the dimensions of the geometry so with the select tool you double click on the group to open it up and then we'll grab the push pull tool which is the letter P and we'll hover over the end here and click once to activate it and then you want to just reference either uh, a point here or you can reference an edge you can reference you can reference the point over here it doesn't matter uh, with the push pull tool it's only going to move in one direction and that's parallel to the face that you're you're pushing or pulling so um, always, you know, try to remember that you don't you don't always have to reference uh, a point that's like connected to the face that you're pushing. You can you can reference a point way over here that's on the same plane as that face, and and that comes in handy when you have a lot of stuff in your in your way um, to to remember that you don't uh, need to be right on the face. You can reference other points okay so now we have our first joist and we need to make a copy we need to make a few copies actually and you could depending on you know the level of detail you want to do you can just you could copy you could take this one and make a copy all the way over here and then divide it up 
and it would just distribute Joyce evenly. Or uh, if you're if you want to be really accurate in uh, in how you lay out the the Joyce, um, typically in the U.S. you do everything 16 inches on center, but that means the first one um, you can't you don't just go 16 inches um, for your first one because you want to go to the center of the joist so since it's inch and a half wide you have to subtract half of that from the 16 inches so the first one you move to 15 and a quarter Now no notice how that time I started the move I hit control to make the copy but then before I clicked again to finish the move I typed in a dimension so you can always do that as well instead of uh, instead of actually finishing the move and then um, typing in a dimension and then from here we want to make multiple copies of the joist so this one's still selected so we'll click that corner and use the move tool to start the move tap control and this time we'll go 16 inches press enter but now we want to make multiple copies so we'll go I'm gonna take a guess here say five times so five and then the multiplication sign press enter and you can see it multiplies it five times and that was right and we just need to move this one back over And so now that you have your framing uh, laid out, I would select all of it and put that into a group as well. And then we can check out our outliner here. Now see how everything automatically gets labeled group. You don't have to go too crazy like with each joist, you know, you don't have to like label each joist, you know, joist one, joist two. Um, that's kind of part of the reason why you group everything so now what you can do is come in here and name that you know joist structure or something and when you collapse that you know you know that whatever's in here are joists and finally we'll take the the whole structure we just made and select that corner and then we want to move this down so we'll tap the up arrow on our keyboard and that'll lock us to the blue axis and then we'll come down here and click um, the underside of the plywood now the final step would be to make uh, your beams and you can do that in the same fashion it's actually the same object as the rim joists so you just take two of those, make two copies, and place them one on each end. So in the next video, I'll go over how to start drawing walls and how to use components to um, make exact copies of walls. And if you'd like to learn more about SketchUp, visit my website at mastersketchup.com.